Hi guys, I'm Anita and I'm back with another video because today is the 31st of October, also my brother's birthday bonus info. And it's time for an October wrap up. I didn't read a lot in October. I feel like I've come into sort of a slumpy mode. I don't really feel like reading when I get home from work and and the books that I'm reading are like, I feel like it's a chore to pick them up. That's what I've been feeling, especially for the first half of the month. I did okay for this bookathon because I read half of, almost half of the books that I read in that week. And I haven't been reading a lot since then. So I don't know what all happened, but I ended up reading a total of eight books. No, nine books, sorry. Um, and yeah. Four of those were already in the bookathon. <laughs> I'll just get started. And the first book that I finished this month was School Spirits by Rachel Hawkins. And it's a spin off to the Hex Hall series trilogy that I really, really enjoyed um, when I read it. And yeah, it, it sort it, it follows a new person, and she is part of this family called the Brannock family and they're known to for growing up being able to fight all these paranormal beings. In this one, um, I sold her, I think she's called Izzy, that's a nickname. Um, Izzy is being placed on this normal school, she's never gone to a normal school because of her being part of this family and having to learn all about these paranormal beings instead. But then she goes to an ordinary school because she's been there's been some talk about there being a ghost on that school. And she joins this club called the Paranormal Something Club. Because they've they're they're believing that there's this spirit on the school. So she joins this club just to see if there's something to it. And the way that it ties in with Hex Hall, she Isolde is part uh, of a family of the main character in the Hex Hall series. Um, she's mentioned a few times and there's a ghost, a spirit that lives in the mirrors that was also appearing in the Hex Hall tr trilogy. But apart from that, um, there wasn't a lot of similarity. As much as I loved Hex Hall, this was just a little disappointing. I, it didn't have the same pace to the story and I didn't really connect the same way with the characters. Um, it did pick up towards the end, like after halfway point, but ultimately I could only give this a three out of five stars. The second book that I've read this month was um, a pre-order and it's the debut novel of Tom Fletcher and it's called The Christmasaurus. And this book is about this boy called William Trundle, who is 10 years old and he loves dinosaurs and he also loves Christmas and set around Christmas time but he he's always been fascinated by dinosaurs and then we have William's father who's obsessed with Christmas and he has a Christmas tree that's decorated inside his closet and wardrobe so he can look at it every morning when he wakes up before he goes to work and he cries all through January because Christmas is over and all that and then we also get the perspective of from the North Pole, where these elves there f one day find this random egg and they decide to take it on to Santa. And they soon find out that it's a dinosaur egg and that is the Christmas story. So he's sort of living on the North Pole with all the elves and, el and Santa and all that. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, Yes, it's a lower middle grade because it's a, from a 10 year old perspective mostly. It also includes some a little sadder subjects because there's some talk about loss and disability, but it's also a lot to do with friendship and how he's will is faring in school and all that. Yeah, it's filled with different uh, illustrations throughout the book. Like this one, <laughs> I thought it was pretty cute. And then apart from that, it's super easy to read because there's also the, all the elves, they sort of speak in riddles and songs and rhymes and stuff. So whenever it's from the North Pole, there'll be a lot of sections that looks like this with, um, yeah, I love 
to the illustrations, I love the story. It's so the story sort of reminds one of um, if you like a good Disney movie where yeah, it's obviously aimed towards kids, but there's also some issues and things that will appeal to adults. And that's sort of how I felt like when I read this book. And I know that this book will also be animated into a movie, animated movie. Um, I'm not sure when, if it's going to be already this Christmas or it's not going to be ready until next. Um, but I've heard that it's going to be, and it's going to be like a musical sort of animated movie. Um, because the, the elves, they speak in this riddle, so it feels good enough that they will be singing and all that. Anyway, I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't sure how, if I would feel like it was a little too juvenile, but I really highly enjoyed this book and I gave it, ended up giving it a five out of five stars. And the next book I finished was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This is a reread for me. I think it's, I don't know how many times I reread this book, but it's one of the books that I've owned myself. So I pick it up often and it's also one of my favorite books in the series because I feel like this has so many little things that add together to what oh, she's already now sort of trying to give hints to what's going to happen like in book s seven and I, I thought that's every time I read I find something new and that's what I really like about it and I also love I really enjoyed the, the Travis tournament um, Yes, I do miss Quidditch a little bit, but I think that's why she added the World Cup. Um, and there's just so many things about this book that you can all see the, the characters are getting older, the plot is taking a new turn and yeah, it going for the darker parts of this series. And yeah, I just really enjoy it. And I also can't wait to read the next book because I haven't read book five as many times as the others. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's so big and intimidating, but I remember really enjoying it, so I can't wait to get to that. I don't want to say a lot of things about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire because most people have read it and most people have their own opinions, but I really love this book. Obviously a five star read for me. Then I also completed a trilogy, which was Ship of Destiny by Robin Hood. It is the final book in the Live Ship Traders trilogy, I really, really enjoyed this trilogy overall and I really, really loved this book. I think this book particularly was, was, has been my favorite Robin Hood book so far. And I think it's interesting to see, think about how these characters, all these characters were in the first book and how much they developed when we were in book three. Um, that's really, really amazing and, and I really love have been loving following these characters for so long um there was one thing in this book that i didn't understand why why it was necessary and it really yeah it was kind of difficult to read about but apart from that i really really enjoyed this book and since it's my favorite and i gave the other two books 4.5 stars i have to give this one a five stars so even though it has some questionable moments. I overall just thought it was really, really amazing. I can't wait to get into the Tony Man trilogy, but it won't be until later this month when I'm gonna join the Tome Tubble, so I feel like that's a good time to start on the Tony Man trilogy. Then next books I'm gonna talk about are the books that I read for the Spooky Zone. I'm not gonna go into details about these because I've already talked about these in uh, my Spooky Zone wrap up. So I'll leave a link to that down below so you can check those out if you want to know more and my thoughts about them. I'm just going to briefly talk about them and what I thought of them. The first book I read for this book of Thorn was The Girl in 6E by A.R. Tour. This is a, an erotic thriller about this girl called Diana Madden who has sort of closed herself up into her apartment because she has this urge to kill people whenever she's around them. So that's how she sort of tries to stay out of trouble when she's sort of barricading herself inside her apartment. And then she gets her income by being a cam girl. And then we also see the perspective of her delivery boy man that comes with all the packages that she's ordering online so that she doesn't have to leave the apartment. Yes, this, this is the gist of this book and I don't want to give too much away. And I really enjoyed it and I ended up giving it a four or five stars. 
I have I wasn't sure if I wanted to read on with this, but I've sort of checked some reviews and they all all the reviews I've seen from my friends on Goodreads, they say that the next books are gonna be even better, so I've decided I wanna check those out those out as well. It's only a, a trilogy, so I have two more books to read for this. The next book that I finished for the Spookathon was Blood Fever by Cara Marie Monning. This is the second book in the Fever series, a series that I've really come to enjoy. It's I'm pretty obsessed with it at the moment. It's really, really good. I enjoy the the relationship between the two main characters so much and I, and all those questions I still have for it that just keep me so intrigued towards towards the next books in the series and yeah one of the things I've sort of questioned a little bit I can see where this may go but as of right now it says on the back it's gothic yes I agree romantic so far, there's not a lot of romance in it. Action packed, packed, yes. Funny, yes. Sexy, not in a romantic way <laughs> so far. Um, I can see how this can get to be all those things, but as of right now, not a lot of romantic things have happened because these two main characters, they, they just seem to be too stubborn to look past what's right look on to what's right yeah in front of them anyway i love this book i gave it a five out of five stars so yeah can't wait to see what's gonna happen next then i also finished an audio which was called the american girl and it was from kate horsley the american girl is about this uh, american exchange student in that goes to france and when she's been there there's something terrible has happened to her and so while well, she's in a coma, and so this journalist goes down to France to sort of try to dig up what's happened to this girl because no one is telling anyone anything and there's a lot of secrecy about it because it's happening in a very, very small town where everyone knows each other. And we also see things from, yeah, from the main characters, well, the victim's perspective from before, uh, the accident happened as well as when she wakes up from the coma when she has some amnesia issues and stuff overall enjoyed this thriller but there was also some issues i had with quinn the victim of this thing and yeah that that dragged the rating a little bit down and i ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and the final book that i read for the spookathon was an anthology and that was slasher girls and monster boys which is a short story collection that's edited together April Genevieve to Hulk and I ha had a lot of fun reading this book I think that my two favorite stories was the one by Kerry Ryan which is called something in the forest dark and deep I think and that was a, an Alice in Wonderland retelling and then there was hide and seek by Megan Shepard which was some sort of yeah, hide and seek game with death, and that was really yeah, fun to to read about or exciting. Overall, I really enjoyed this anthology, but there was also some really not so good stories in it, so that dragged the rating overall rating down to a three point five out of five stars. Those were the concludes the books that I read for this bookathon, and since then I've only managed to finish one more book, and that was The Her Mad Hatter by Marie Hall. This is the first book in. The Kingdom series, which is a series about, uh, yeah, fairy tale retellings, basically, and it follows this. It's, there's this uh, fairy godmother, obviously, uh, <laughs> who has, to, who is the matchmaker of the villains of the fairy tale enchanted forest places. Um, so the first one is about the Mad Hatter and this girl called Alice who, yeah, then they sort of interact. It's a very short book, only 130 pages. It's paranormal romance, there's a lot, not a lot, a lot. There's quite some uh, steaminess to it, but yeah, I don't know, it was quite fun. It was quick and... It was okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. It was not mind-blowing at all. 
Um, I have books one to at least six. Maybe I have actually one to nine in this series, and I got them all for free on Kindle. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be continuing it, but if I feel like a short fairy tale retelling one day, then I have some to choose from. And I know that they're short, but they were also quite fun and easy to read. So, these were all the books that I read for this month. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you read anything interesting this month, anything you want to recommend to me. Have you read any of the books that I have been reading? Let me know that part that in the comments as well, i really like to know. I'll be back with a TBR video really soon, probably tomorrow. Bye!